Egypt, the richest source of archaeological treasures on the planet. Oh, that's a fabulous one. Beneath this desert landscape, lie the secrets of this ancient civilization. Wow, you see why the pharaohs chose this place. Now, for a full season of excavations, our cameras have been given unprecedented access to follow teams on the front line of archaeology. I'm driving so fast because I'm so excited. It's an entrance. We can see an entrance. Revealing buried secrets. I have just been told that they have found something. Oh my gosh. <laughs> A sphinx. And making discoveries that could rewrite ancient history. <sighs> this time, new secrets of the boy king, Tutankhamun. Alia uses pioneering technology to reveal startling new evidence about his tomb and why it remained hidden for 3,000 years. A lot of robberies were going on. How was it not found? Ace's team discovers a long-lost cache of King Tutankhamun's treasures. <laughs> it's the most exciting discovery in my career. And Alejandro discovers extraordinary burial treasures in a 4,000-year-old tomb. Congratulations! The Valley of the Kings. 3,500 years ago, the great pharaohs stopped building pyramids as their tombs. They chose these secluded cliffs to become their cemetery. Today, archaeologists come from all over the world to unlock the mysteries still hidden in this city of the dead. It's the first day in the valley for Cairo-born Egyptologist Alia Ishmael and her team. It's a real buzz in this place. People are coming from all over the world. Coming to the valley, it's amazing. I'm so proud to have such ancestry. It's one of the most famous necropolises in the world. And I think what is special is that it comes out of nowhere. Over 300 miles south of Cairo, in the heart of Egypt, lie the limestone cliffs of the Valley of the Kings. After 200 years of excavation, archaeologists have located 65 tombs hidden among the rocks. But only one has ever been found with its treasure still inside. It belonged to the pharaoh, Tutankhamun. This here is number 62, Tutankhamun. One of those great finds of the century. British explorer Howard Carter discovered Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922. One of his teams spotted steps leading down through the sand. They led to the tomb entrance, buried beneath feet of rubble and debris. What Carter found inside inspired archaeologists for generations to come. Deep inside the mountains, amid a maze of tunnels that bore deep through the rock, Carter reached the tomb of Tutankhamun, hidden right in the center of the valley. Inside, he found treasures unlike anything ever seen before. Over 5,000 priceless artifacts, including golden statues. In the burial chamber, the pharaoh's mummy, wearing a golden death mask, was placed inside a coffin made of more than 200 pounds of solid gold. This intact tomb made Tutankhamun the most famous of the pharaohs. Now, 
Aaliyah is investigating this golden pharaoh's life. Wow. And why his tomb remained hidden for so long. Aaliyah's team has been scanning and documenting the tomb for the last 10 years, and they've made a remarkable discovery. The idea here is to understand what's going on when you look at the data void of color. The scans strip away the paint on the walls to reveal unusual markings. This is the main scene, and here is the 3D of the north wall. So as you can see here, the silhouette of an image, and this would have been done while they were painting. The images show the indented outline of the face hidden below. It's caused by the tip of the paintbrush if you start painting when the plaster is still wet. This is why the brushes would have made a very light impression. And this allows us to understand that it was rushed. But why would the tomb builders rush such an important job? The pictures on the wall reveal another set of clues. Despite becoming the most famous pharaoh of ancient Egypt, Tutankhamun did not have a lengthy reign. He was only a nine-year-old boy when he became king and relied on trusted advisors to help rule his vast empire. As Tutankhamun grew older, he was known to portray himself as a warrior king, riding into battle on a chariot. But the boy king suffered from multiple illnesses, including malaria. He was only 19 years old when he unexpectedly died. Aaliyah thinks the marks her scans reveal in the plaster are evidence of a hurried burial due to Tutankhamun's sudden death. The decorated part of the tomb is very small. It's only the burial chamber. The rest of the tomb is not decorated. If they have more time, all of this was going to be decorated. While the tomb's construction may have been rushed, its treasures were everything a pharaoh could desire to take him into the afterlife. So why did this tomb lay hidden below a layer of rock for thousands of years when all the other tombs in the valley were looted? To solve this mystery, Aaliyah will turn to new technology as she moves her investigation out into the valley. 300 miles north in Giza, in the shadow of the pyramids, the biggest treasure hall in history is getting a new home. A $1 billion museum and research center. When completed, the Grand Egyptian Museum will reunite all of Tutankhamun's treasures in one place for the first time in 100 years. Having all of the pieces from the tomb of Tutankhamun together in one place, this will be a fantastic chance to find new facts, new hidden things about Tutankhamun. After Carter removed the treasures from Tut's tomb, they ended up in museums around Egypt. Now, for the first time, Scientists and Egyptologists will use modern technology to analyze each object. Some details reappear and give us new information about these antiquities. But some of Tut's greatest treasures are yet to arrive. 300 miles south in the Luxor Museum, Asa Zedin is preparing 122 of these priceless artifacts for the move to Giza. I'm very, very proud to work with this kind of the artifact. We have a huge responsibility for dealing with the collection of Tutankhamun. Amun. This is the once in the lifetime to move this collection uh, to Cairo. Ace's packing list includes one of Tut's famous chariots, intricate model boats, and a unique head of the cow goddess Hathor, elaborately gilded with gold. 
From my opinion, as head of cow, like the mask of Tutal Amun, very important pieces in, in this collection. <laughs> After just four hours, Asus packing suddenly comes to a halt. One of his teams has discovered something completely unexpected in his storeroom. It's an antique box that Howard Carter used to pack and transport Tutankhamun's treasures out of the tomb. I never discovered something like that before. It's the most exciting discovery in my career. The box has been missing, presumed lost for decades and no one knows what treasures it may hold. 120 miles south of the Valley of the Kings, near Aswan, a Spanish research team from Hayen University is hoping to follow in Carter's footsteps and make new discoveries that could rewrite history. Chono. Professor Alejandro Jimenez Serrano heads the largest foreign team working in Egypt. Today is the first day of the dig season. Sorry for the mess. We are sharing the room, three researchers of the team. This is my, my bed, supposedly the best one. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> it's amazing to get up and the first thing that you see, apart from the ugly face of your roommates, is the Kubet el Hawa, the hill. Kubet el Hawa is one of the largest ancient burial sites in Egypt. So far, 100 tombs have been discovered here. They belong to the nobles who governed Egypt hundreds of years before the pharaohs buried in the Valley of the Kings. <laughs> Alejandro's mission is to hunt for more unopened tombs and reveal more about these early Egyptians. It's difficult to explain uh, how I feel. It's uh, not only nervous, it's exciting. It's a mix of feelings. It's an honor to, to come every year. Now it comes the most difficult part of the day, to climb the hill. This is the team's 10th year digging here. So nice to be here again. <laughs> There's a reason why everyone is excited to be back. Last year, Alejandro found the entrance to a sealed tomb, but his permit expired before he could explore inside. Today is 14 degrees. I'm working under the sun. Today is going to be tough. To protect against modern day tomb robbers, they put a steel security door to block the entrance of the vertical shaft that leads to the sealed burial chamber. Well, it has been one year waiting, one year imagining the possibilities. I'm very excited. <laughs> In Luxor, Ace's team packs Tutankhamun's treasures for the move to the Grand Egyptian Museum in Giza. But in the storeroom, Asa is ready to open Carter's long-lost box to discover what's inside. The team gathers around to see if the box really does contain priceless treasures from Tutankhamun's tomb. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. It's amazing. These delicate wooden pieces are ancient boat parts. Thank you, Mr. Mohammed Auto, about this new discovery. Storeroom records suggest they could be missing from a model boat Howard Carter found in Tutankhamun's tomb. This is the head of the one of the bundle, like that. And the remains of the gold is still there after all these years. According to ancient Egyptian beliefs, boats played a key role after death. So placing model boats into tombs was a vital part of any burial. The vessels also came complete with crew because it was believed the replicas would come to life and help with fishing and transport in the underworld. The pharaohs used a special vessel to sail across the sky for eternity. 
Ordinary people also thought they could reach the afterlife by boat, rowing on the Nile and into the next world. You can see here the date of the newspaper. It's Sunday, 5th of November, 1933. Howard Carter may be, he read this newspaper before using it as a support in this box. To discover where these pieces came from, Mohammed inspects Carter's original inventory. Here the photo which taken for the tomb itself, and here we can find the boat, it's num number 321, and with the mast itself, which is here. Records show that the box was sent to Luxor in 1973, but had gone missing, presumed lost or stolen. It's really exciting, a new discovery for one of the most important artifacts belongs to the King Tutankhamun. Asa thinks the rest of the boat is safe in the new Cairo lab, so they may finally be able to reunite it. To transport the treasures to Giza, Asa's team must traverse 400 miles of barren desert roads and crowded city streets before they reach the safety of the new museum. It will take two trucks to transport all 122 of the artifacts to Giza. This is a very, very big moment for the collection. This is the final trip of Tutankhamun. Uh, but with such priceless relics on board, there's concern the convoy could be a target for a hijacking. We have a good uh, police uh, and a good uh, army. They will follow us uh, during moving from Luxor until arrive to Cairo. With security in place, it's time to roll. They now face a grueling 12-hour journey through the desert to reach Giza before nightfall. Ever since Carter's discovery of Tutankhamun's priceless golden treasures, archaeologists have continued to try and figure out where and how the ancient Egyptians found vast quantities of gold. Fifty miles south of the Valley of the Kings, on the edge of the eastern desert, French gold expert Thomas Fauché and archaeologist John Ward are on the hunt for the origins of Tutankhamun's gold. So I'm going to try. What are you waiting for, a traffic signal? The eastern desert covers 85,000 square miles of remote barren wilderness. Some of the rock here contains tiny grains of gold locked inside. Thomas has studied ancient gold mining techniques for seven years. Now he wants to see if he can find any evidence of it. But this part of the desert is a risky place to be. The thing is we need to leave before dark because it's not safe if we are staying there because we can lose our way, we can have an accident. And it's also at the sunset that all the snakes are going out. Snakes? Yeah, vapors. No one told me about they're, they're on on yeah. vapors, yeah. The first stop, an ancient well. It could provide clues to the location of mining communities during the time of Tutankhamun. This is the well just uh, in front of us, yeah. It's dry. My god, that's a long way down. The well might be dry today, but it was so important to the ancient Egyptians they built a temple to honor it. It's beautiful, isn't it? They've actually applied a plaster gyp ceiling and then applied the paint. Amazing. The text engraved on these walls reveals clues about the gold miners and where they were heading. Ancient engineers built a network of wells and rest stops stretching all the way across the desert each a day's walk from the last, enabling travelers and miners to safely cross and explore the barren desert. The temple carvings indicate these wells led toward the mines. Thomas hopes he will be able to find some evidence of the people behind Tutankhamun's gold mining operations. 
now it's time to uh, go deeper east. Like an ancient treasure map, they must follow the trail of wells further into the desert. In Aswan, at the ancient burial site of Kubet al Hawa, Alejandro is about to open a 4,000 year old tomb. They're on the hunt for whatever burial treasure may be inside. I don't know who is more nervous, you know, my team. I want to go now. <laughs> After a year of waiting, Alejandro can finally enter the tomb. It's amazing. It contains a 4,000-year-old coffin. Workers have inserted a box covered in acid-free paper inside the coffin to stop it from collapsing while they examine the tomb. <sighs> we have been very lucky. It's impossible to explain the feelings that I'm having. The burial consisted in two coffins, the outer coffin and the inner coffin. Among the debris of the outer coffin, Alejandro spots something extraordinary. It is full of wooden models, but unfortunately, the outer coffin fall over them. The chamber is full of model boats, similar to the one in Tutankhamun's tomb. To find these funerary boats, in a tomb is rare today. But there's not just one. There are four, complete with crew. You want to laugh, you want to shout, you want to cry. This is the first time in 70 years a set of boats like this has been found. This discovery gives Alejandro an extremely rare opportunity to study such important burial goods. But first, he has to extract them from the tomb safely. Alejandro calls in his team of conservation specialists, Sarah and Teresa. I have one, two, three, four bolts. Yes. And the observation is very bad. Yeah, it's very difficult. And the insects eat the support. Termites have attacked the wooden boats. Sarah sprays on a liquid adhesive to hold them together. So we will see if they are capable to make a miracle. They prepare a foam-lined cradle to support the boat for the move to the team's restoration lab. But the wooden hull is stuck to the tomb floor. It'll require surgical precision using scalpels to free it. From the tomb to the restoration lab, we are talking about perhaps uh, 40 meters. But uh, today it's very windy, which is very, very aggressive. We could not see. The ancient boats are extremely fragile. <laughs> Get ready. With a drop in the wind, the team sees the chance to remove the first boat. Be careful, Lily. That was exciting. One of the best moments uh, in my career. Have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight person. Will take many weeks to clean it and fix the pieces that were uh, broken some centuries ago. While the team gets to work on the boat. Alejandro can finally open the coffin 
to see who and what is inside. In the middle of the desert, the convoy carrying Tutankhamun's priceless treasures is two hours into its journey when Asa spots a problem. I'm worried the boats are shouting at this. A thermal blanket protecting Tut's golden chariot is coming loose. If it flies off, it could cause a crash. We stop to make it safe. The unscheduled stop in the desert makes this convoy carrying the world's most priceless treasures, a potential target for hijackers. Asa and his team are unable to secure the loose thermal covering protecting Tut's chariot. Some problems happen. Removing the cover, they risk the scorching desert heat potentially damaging the priceless treasure. Everything's okay. Now, Asa needs to get the convoy moving. We hope to arrive to Cairo safely. In the valley, Egyptologist Alia Ishmael is on a mission to discover how Tutankhamun's tomb and treasures remained hidden for 3,000 years. A lot of robberies were going on in ancient times and modern times, but it seems that this particular tomb was not found. How was it not found? The ancient engineers of Tutankhamun's tomb had a plan. Inside the mountain, they went to great lengths to conceal the tomb. The pharaoh's burial chamber is located 26 feet underground and is defended from the inside out. Engineers constructed a wall to block off the burial chamber. They filled the corridor leading to the king with tons of rubble before sealing a final doorway and covering Tutankhamun's tomb with a vast amount of boulders under earth, standard tomb protection of the day. But when Carter discovered this tomb, it had more material on top than any other in the valley. This may explain how it remained undiscovered for over 3,000 years. But how did this extra rock and debris get here? Alia joins German geologist Martin Ziegler to investigate. If you want to understand the evolution of the Valley of the Kings, you need to also understand the evolution of the rock. Martin thinks there could be clues in the rocks at the entrance to a nearby tomb. Just at the entrance of it, the slab is just hanging above. A rock basically could fall out of the cliff. Egypt is hit with dozens of earthquakes each year. So Martin's installed a seismometer to measure any vibrations that could trigger rock falls. With this one, we calculated to be away about 600 to 700 kilometers from the Valley of the Kings. What if an earthquake would ha were to happen like much closer to the Valley of the Kings? How would it affect it? A very big earthquake could uh, destabilize some rock portions. So when you look in the, in the history of recorded earthquakes, the uh, historic time scales, let's say the thousands of years, we have some records of earthquakes of that type of magnitude. So could rockfalls caused by earthquakes 3,000 years ago account for the extra tons of rock that covered the entrance to Tutankhamun's tomb? From the geological past and the historic point of view, we could have rock falls or rock slides that are triggered by earthquakes, covering tombs. But there are no cliffs directly above Tutankhamun's tomb. So it wouldn't have been hit by a direct rockfall. 
How did so much extra material travel down the valley and completely cover the entrance to the tomb? To solve this mystery, Alia and Martin must take to the air. Deep in the eastern desert, Thomas and John are looking for evidence of the miners who produced the gold for Tutankhamun's treasures. They're trying to find a route of ancient wells that the gold miners would have followed as they traveled to the mines. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. But I'm losing a few kidneys! <laughs> 70 miles from the last ancient well, Thomas and John head into the unknown. With their GPS broken down, they now risk getting completely lost. This piece of technology is defunct. It's not working. <laughs> Your pin is literally on the right side, so we're now at the back, back end. Yeah. So you need to turn around. But after two days of searching, John thinks they may have finally found something. What's that over there? At the base of that mountain there? So we found it. Okay, so it looks that we found a very interesting place here. It's a settlement. It may look like scattered stones and debris, but to Thomas's expert eye, he can see the outline of ancient buildings. We have the huts where the people were living and where they were working. Yeah, we definitely have here the oh, evidence Thomas. where. I mean, people have been walking here, and we see, yeah, there are even more over there. As they get closer, John spots the tools the ancient miners would have used to extract gold from the rocks. Oh. Yeah, that's the grinding stone. That's a pounder. Yeah, that's a pounder, yeah, exactly. That's what they would break yeah, they would the quartz with. Yeah. It's the remains of an ancient gold mining camp. I mean, how many people are we talking? 20, 30? Yeah, maybe there were like families living here. Thomas has studied ancient mining techniques for years, but seeing this evidence firsthand brings home the hardship the miners endured. You start from a piece of quartz like this and you want uh, to make powder out of it, so you need to crush it. You have to imagine how much pain it takes just to break a single piece of quartz, doing that like all day long in the sun, pounding and pounding and grinding and grinding and doing that for years. Evidence here paints a picture of the life of desert miners. They cut shafts stretching up to 32 feet deep into the stone in search of precious seams of quartz rock that contained gold. Crushing the quartz was a massive undertaking. Mining experts have calculated that a team of 20 people would take a week to process enough stone to make just a spoonful of gold. <laughs> oh, that's heavy. Seriously. Sadly, there is very little evidence left of these ancient mines, but these settlements provide new insight into the communities that lived such hard lives processing the gold. We have all the material they were using, for sure that they were working here to extract uh, and process the gold uh, to send it to the Valley of the Kings. We found it. We found it. In Aswan, Alejandro's team prepares to remove the coffin from the tomb they've opened. Inscriptions reveal it belongs to a man called Shumai. They have just struck the lid of the coffin of Shumai. Rebecca, you are the first person that is looking at Shumai's face in 4,000 years. Muy bien, coño. Congratulations. <laughs> The inner coffin is intact, but extremely fragile. Alejandro's team has reinforced it to try and protect the mummy inside. It's just difficult to express the feelings that I have now. It's a special moment because I'm, I'm studying this family. And it's almost my second family. In 
the restoration lab, the intricate beauty of the model boats is starting to appear. Termites have eaten much of the wood, but their excrement has actually helped hold parts of the boat together for thousands of years. We have some parts that are still in a very good state of conservation. This head of the man, it is covered with the excrement of the termites, but the wood is still visible. Alejandro has spotted a figure distinct from the other carvings. We can see in the middle of the boat, yellow face, which belongs to a mummy, which would represent uh, Shemai. This exceptional discovery will help archaeologists understand the evolution of burial practices in ancient Egypt. I was dreaming always to discover something like this. Um, it's a dream that came truth. Alejandro's next task is to bring Shemai's mummy above ground for the first time in 4,000 years. In the Valley of the Kings, Alia and Martin look for clues to explain why Tutankhamun's tomb remained hidden for so long. They've got special permission from the government to use a drone to get a unique perspective on the position of Tutankhamun's tomb. There we go. If you look down, we should be over the Tutankhamun entrance yeah. right now. Now we can see the cliffs in the back. Here we can see the central position. Here we have the tomb. And above we can see debris. Loose rock and debris cover the cliffs behind Tut's tomb. But the drone also reveals these flood channels carved into the rock by heavy rains over thousands of years. And they could be the vital missing clue. We think that if we have flash flooding, that material can flow down in these kind of channels. Throughout history, the valley has been hit by earthquakes and occasional flash floods. The floodwaters push rubble downhill toward the tombs. Tutankhamun's tomb lies in a spot where the channels of water converge and dump tons of rock. This, combined with stone chippings from a tomb built above, buried the entrance deeper and kept it hidden for over 3,000 years. It's very exciting for me as an Egyptologist to see it in Common's tomb from up here and see how it fits within the valley. It is the prime location. It is the one that was most protected. He got the most sheltered tomb of all. Tutankhamun was a boy king who played a minor role in Egypt's history. But because his tomb remained hidden for thousands of years, his treasure was kept safe from robbers and made him the legend we know today. In Aswan, the team is bringing the mummy of ancient Egyptian Shammai to the surface for the first time in 4,000 years. This is the culmination of 10 years of field work for Alejandro and an incredible opportunity to learn more about Shammai. Ooh, 1.25, 1.25, it's quite short. My daughter is more or less like this. 
and she is eight years old. So I expected that at least he he would be around 20 years old or something. It has been a surprise. I never expected that he could be just uh, a boy. On his coffin, it was written that he was the person in charge of the administration of the store. Controlling the store, you control the people because you decide who is going to receive food or not. This new evidence reveals Shammai held a powerful position in ancient Egyptian society at a very young age. He may not have been a pharaoh, but like the boy king Tutankhamun, his status afforded him a tomb and burial goods to ensure a safe passage into the afterlife. It's taken 12 hours, but finally, Asa and his convoy of Tutankhamun's treasures arrive in the city. Now we are in Cairo, welcome by crowded traffic. Very, very, very exciting. We wait for this moment. Tarek Tofik, the museum director, is anxious to get everything safely inside. First cradles have to be taken out in order for the two tiny almond pieces to start emerging. Now I can say I'm very, very happy. Mission is complete, yes. It will be like unpacking Christmas presents when we get out these pieces and find out more details about how they complement the whole story of King Tutankhamun. Ace's team can finally unpack the priceless treasures. Scientists and Egyptologists can now begin to study and analyze each item in their new high-tech lab. Top of the list are the newly discovered boat pieces. We check now in our database which of them may be related to any boats here in the storeroom. For almost 100 years, the boat that was buried alongside Tutankhamun to help him travel into the afterlife has been missing its mast. This is mm -hmm. one. Uh, in, in the middle, the cabin. Exactly. <laughs> very beautiful. It's amazing that after all these years, we still have new discoveries and new secrets for this uh, golden king, Tutankhamun. 100 years after its discovery, Tutankhamun's stunning treasure is still surprising the world. And the Valley of the Kings shows why it remains the greatest place on Earth to hunt for the secrets of Egypt's famous pharaohs.